Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to talk about the Paxlovid COVID rebound. Let me first start by explaining the phenomenon that we're seeing. Patients that take Paxlovid during their COVID illness seemingly recover, but then have rebound symptoms that occur two to eight days later, and may even begin testing positive again for COVID after having tested negative. It even prompted the CDC to put out a health advisory to physicians on May 24th with the headline, quote, COVID-19 rebound after Paxlovid treatment. Some patients with this rebound infection have mild symptoms or are even asymptomatic, but not all of them, and some are even as severe or even more severe than the original infection. And the viral load during this rebound period seems to be equal to the initial infection. Thankfully, most of the rebound infections are short-lived with most patient symptoms resolving and their tests turning negative again in about three days after reoccurrence. During this time of reoccurrence, it's recommended that patients isolate for at least an additional five days until their symptoms resolve. And there are still so many questions that are left unanswered at this point. Paxlovid exploded onto the market in November 2021 and was touted by many to be the drug that physicians were waiting for. The data was impressive and showed that the drug could cut the risk of hospitalization and death by 89%. But the drug was never tested in patients that had received any vaccination, much less those patients that have been double vaccinated and boosted. And Pfizer has not published any final data on the use of Paxlovid with patients that have been vaccinated. So physicians like myself are left wondering how much this medication helps vaccinated patients recover from their illness. And then we get to Paxlovid rebound. We have no idea how many patients this is occurring in, but informal polls and opinions have stated 20 to 45% of patients that took Paxlovid had rebound symptoms after they completed their five day course of Paxlovid. And if this is true, it's certainly much more than the one to 2% rebound number that Pfizer is stating that has been seen in both patients that took Paxlovid and those that did not, although this data hasn't been published. And another side effect of Paxlovid that also seems to be occurring at a much higher rate than the initial studies indicated is dysgeusia, or an impaired sense of taste. In the initial studies, Pfizer noted that 5.6% of its participants that took Paxlovid had dysgeusia, versus 0.3% of those that took a placebo. But real-world data from physicians and their patients would make it seem that this side effect is occurring much, much more often. Almost every one of the patients that I know that has taken Paxlovid has reported some unpleasant change in their taste while taking the medication. Some experts have wondered if the particular Omicron strain of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that's circulating at this point causes more rebound symptoms than its predecessor Delta did. Or is there something happening specifically in patients that have been vaccinated and are now taking Paxlovid that increases their risk for the bitter metallic taste and the rebound symptoms? Some experts have wondered if a longer course of Paxlovid may be needed to prevent the rebound symptoms that are occurring. And the NIH is currently in talks with Pfizer to test out a longer course of Paxlovid. And some other questions that we still have include whether Paxlovid can pre help prevent long haul symptoms and whether patients are still infectious during this rebound period. But a preprint study from the VA documented 10 rebound COVID infections of which two seem to infect others around them. For me personally, I'm going to have a specific discussion with vaccinated patients before prescribing Paxlovid. We just don't have good data for this group of patients about how well this medication works for them and whether there are more risks than benefits to taking the medication at this point. As more data emerges, I will be sure to give you all updates. Thanks for joining me.